Hello guys and welcome to the Elements Cup season number two. A uh, best of one between Power Rangers Fantastic Five. Sadly, we start halfway through through the draft, but you should be able to see the draft regardless. Uh, just so I can recover a bit of my voice, as you can tell. I myself, the Swordfish, your cast for today. I have a bit of a scrawny voice. <clears throat> it's a bit, it's dying a bit from casting like eight to seven hours a day. Uh, sadly, you know that's that's why you're gonna have not the usual amazing cast you have but a bit less subpar however as it make it doesn't make this game less important or less interesting as we have fantastic five versus power rangers a amazing uh, matchup honestly both very strong teams you have power rangers with some of the classic classic players like Cheshire cat j4 or a big number in with team forever and then, i mean he's honestly god damn it off an inch I saw, have also been with Power Rangers for quite a while now. Fantastic Five similarly with Illidan and Always Wanna Fly. Now Always Wanna Fly, the latest addition to the team. That said, let's get right into the draft or whatever is left of it. You have Drow Shadow, Demon Timber Song, Konka picked up for Power Rangers. Good amount of team fight, good amount of damage in addition to two ranged heroes. And we add a third one, the Dusa has been banned out, but you could still add, say, a Bat Rider or, or, sorry, an Invoker, for example, to this draft. Honestly, Invoker Konka is a very powerful combo. Invoker Shadow Demon is also very powerful. I, I'd be hard pressed to think that they'd pick anything that's not an invoker, really. It's just too strong. Red Fantastic Five, and a, a similar good team fight, sanking other Titan, uh, adding a, an Oracle and a Murana, a lot of magical damage mainly for this team. They need some sort of physical damage dealer. Sven, for example, would be fantastic. Stark comes to mind, but this is an Illidan draft after all. That's not an Illidan hero. Uh, we would. What are our Illidan heroes, actually? I was going to say maybe. Honestly, shit, what, what does Illidan even play? Sven was banned out because I guess he plays that sometimes, but it's not really an Illidan hero. Dryranger is an Illidan hero, Silencer is an Illidan hero, Le Lena is as well, but I don't think we're going to see any of them today. Now, let's see if the Invoker does come out for Power Rangers. They could still pick up a Tinker. Tinker works as yeah, decently. Tinker's not as good, honestly, in this draft. It's just pretty strong against what Fantastic Five bring us in general because of his insane amount of magical damage and the fact that he can it's hard to catch him out but i wouldn't say tinker's a good pick up here uh you can even go for the puck but the puck has already been banned uh, death prophet also seems like a decent idea with the extra silence and again more of those ranged heroes or finally a hero that we've seen quite a while the od <clears throat> which would be the last possibility here for power rangers due to his pure damage and how powerful that is against an oracle in general Now, let's see what Power Rangers pick up here with their fifth pick. Ah, okay, what the fuck? A Timbersaw made axe off lane. All right, not, not the best draft, frankly. J4, mm, you're not really surprising me here. This axe is not that great. Fantastic Five. Now I guess you lose the possibility of going for Phantom Lancer for Illidan. The Void has also been banned out for this guy. Chaos Knight. <laughs> I mean, it's certainly a little bit hero, actually quite alright against Fire Ranger, but the X stops him. I guess if you had gone for the no, Invoker, it would have been strong against Chaos Knight anyway, so yeah, that's fine. Mm. Life Stealer honestly seems like the best option. If you're going by draft alone, Life Stealer is amazing. Really good against Timbersaw with his rage, and the, especially coming to the late game, he's an integrated BKB. Not weak against Axe whatsoever, easily kills Drought Ranger, has the Life Stealer bomb with the Sand King. So that seems like a better option too. By the way, for those of you Russians in the chat, we are uh, the English cast, so don't know how to tell you that. I'm not going to cast in Russian, more, so, you know, if you might not understand, that's because, yeah, we're English. Right? Cool, that said, fifth pick from Fantastic Five, what's it going to be? You can also go for a lot of, um, I mean, they have a lot of magic damage for the axe, which is why the axe is a pretty bad pick in general. A lot of magic damage against the timber, so you pretty much say you need something that deals physical damage. You can see a PA also working out, frankly, if you want to go for that. The, uh, nice to know would be the proper hero. PA, probably more of an Illidan hero, one of those non traditional carries. I mean, you could still see the Chaos Knight, like I said, but that's because it's Illidan, you know, not because of any other reason. The Husker is not available either, so that would be another hero that would work combined really well with the Oracle. PA does decently with the Oracle, granted, uh, especially if you cover a bit of lifesteal. Phantom Assassin. Oh, there it is. See, <laughs> I was right. I was right. I know these. I know this motherfucker. Can't play life dealer for the life of him. <laughs> yeah, has to go for the weird pick. Okay, I have to 
reconnect. That's from the earlier game I was casting. Go, go, Power Rangers. Didn't think of that. <laughs> That's nice. I love the go, go, Power Rangers. If anyone remembers that uh, old stuff. Anyway, so we're in the game. Let's change into the right draft. There it is. And now we have the teams getting ready. But before we do present, or sorry, before we get into the game itself, let's present the teams real quick. Uh, before we do so, though, even before that, we even have the presentation of myself. My name is D Swordfish. I'll be your cast for today. Hope you enjoy the cast, despite my dying voice. It, it hopefully is still good cast and somewhat enjoyable. Cool. Let's present the present teams now, real quick. Y'all will be playing the Oracle in the support position. The uh, the carry of this game is to be Illidan, obviously, on the Phantom Assassin. Second support being Armin, playing the Elder Titan. In the offlane, I've always want to fly on the Sanking. And then in the mid lane, 633, Bizzle's perfect as the Marana. Meanwhile, for, for Power Rangers, we are going to have J4 on the Shadow Demon in the support position. Second support being the Kunkka. Here, you're played by Bignum. The Dragon will be played by Goddamn in the carry position. In the mid lane, we have Afuninj as the Timber Saw. And finally, in the off lane, Cheshire Cat as the Axe. So, alright. That's going to work out for them, see, uh, I suppose. I like, the, I like, the, I like the, the draft a lot for Power Rangers, frankly, except for that Axe pick. It could be much, there could be much better picks. Honestly, the Dragon Rangers misutilized here in this draft. You, have, you don't actually utilize her aura at all. So there's absolutely no point in even picking up. Like the agility heroes only benefit, agility items only benefit her, and I guess the creeps to some degree. But that's it. That's it. The aura only benefits the Shadow Demon, which is not a guy that cares about that either, because his main damage is from Shadow Poison, regardless. And the other three just don't benefit from it whatsoever. Cook is fine, and so is Timber Side. You know, it's a good draft, but the axe. Itself, uh, we could run so many better mid laners. Invoker particularly looks amazing with considering the draft they had. But it me the Afro Ninja just doesn't want to play Invoker. It's much more confident on the beat in the time itself. So that's uh, the main reason. Has one range to you, I suppose. Now with Fantastic Five. And the Odin pickup also don't like it too much, honestly. Life Stealer seems like a much better option here. But because the PA is very weak to the Timber Saw damage in general, has no way to become magic immune. Also weak against the Axe and his Colding Blade due to her low HP pool in general. And also weak to the Blade Mill that Axe usually picks up regardless. Particularly weak against the Kunkka, because the Kunkka has a lot of magical damage that usually kills you off. And the illusions hurt a lot when they actually disrupt you. But I guess he's kind of good against Dragon Ranger, so that was the point that they didn't pick it. It's just one of those heroes that's like, okay, I guess it's not too bad. Yeah, sure, he gets countered pretty heavily. But mainly the whole point is Ildin can play him, and that's all we can do. And the reason why Ildin does bad when there's the time is because of his lack of versatility. So that's the big point. It's not really important. Wait, no, this is like as live as it can get. But I am here uh, casting for you guys live and creating a chance. Also recording this game for a VOD that can be seen later today. If you're interested, you can always follow me on Twitter to see what the VODs are going to be. Cool. That said, Armin, if they hit his five Shadow Poison stacks, almost dead, and J4 killing him off really quickly just with five Shadow Poison stacks, a lot of damage, just forget a Shadow Poison doubles every single time, right? So that's actually a lot of magical damage, and then you add to it the auto attacks, which are actually boosted by the Dragon Ranger. Would be quite fantastic for this, uh, for this dude. Good stuff. Now let's see. Uh, in the mid lane as well, you have... Uh, a Murana vs. Timbersaw matchup. Let's look at the matchups a bit. In the mid lane, a Murana vs. Timbersaw matchup. Timbersaw doesn't have much trouble due to the Whirling Death helping him out a lot in the creep wave and killing him or not. And he's also hard to kill, frankly, with that Timber Chain helping him out. But at the same time, Murana's a ranged hero and a per usual range should have a slight advantage. Uh, granted, with a stout shield, you should be perfectly fine. Even one for a wow, poor man's shield. Not really necessary on a Timbersaw. Frankly, any hero <clears throat> that has or will acquire a lot of armor. The poor man's shield is a waste. In fact, poor man's shield makes the stout shield worse in terms of effectivity because of how stout, because of how uh, damage block and armor work out. So it would be better off if he had just knocked out of the poor man's shield. Barely worth it, unless you're an agility hero. In terms of effectivity, I guess it is worth it in terms of extra armor. But only giving him one arm at both. Six? Really? Yeah, it's because it should give him one arm. The agility gain is deplorable, but is it not? Right. Well, on the top lane, you have a pretty strong lane, which is why, um, it's a strong lane, actually. The Shadow Demon Konka combo is too powerful. 
That's why they decide that, that they won't even put the Sanking in this lane. I was gonna fly with the Kong in the jungle, and the other time we'll do the same thing in the jungle. Not gonna bother with these, uh, with this top lane at all, because it's just the team kills. You already noticed that the Elves right now almost died, just plainly because of the Shadow Poison, so... Similarly, there's absolutely no... What the fuck are you Walked in with the Clarity, took a bit of damage. And died. Right, that was a double Clarity. But... But, uh, they don't want to put anyone in this lane because they died. So, similarly, in the bottom lane, with an old Titan and PA, that's too much damage coming their way, especially with a Phantom Strike pretty much guaranteed to you. And you can even charge up the Fortune Zen for up to two seconds, being a stop, plus a Phantom Strike, plus then a Stifling Dagger to follow up. A little more damage and slow. Too dangerous. And then the question resides, which is what is better as it gets farmed? The Dragonger or the PA? Dragonger gets an early Dragon Lance, which helps her out much more. The PA will require an early Desolator. And yeah, I don't know if that's Illidan's build, because he's played PA before the Desolator is still even around, you know? Well, obviously not. The Desolator was, was there. But, like, uh, the point is, Illidan <coughs> was playing PA as a carry before, and even even regardless of if he won or not. He was playing as a carry before the Desolator build came about, so he might not go for it either. He's going for Facebook, though. Which again at the most common PA build usually want attack speed, a bit of attack speed even. But Facebook goes fine. That's, it's, it, it depends really. It, it's uh <laughs> Elden high MR no brain. Well the issue with Elden Moffin times is really just the fact that he has a really low pool of heroes. They can play well and I'm all up for unconventional heroes, it's fantastic when he has unconventional heroes, but his inability to adapt to the meta is pretty bad. Uh, he will never make it to tier 1 team if he can't adapt to the meta. In fact, when he was a first pro, it was mainly because F and G that Elden could even be relevant, frankly. Uh, now, he's been kind of playing. So, Cat being targeted, there's no stop coming in, trying to help out. A lot of people are fighting for the game before the stop comes out. And Cheshire Cat will use now all the stuff people coming in. That pure fight for the healing Armin being hit by the Thorns. They might go onto him. The Xbox spot. They have a sentry up, so they can kill Armin really easily. Calling White to finish him off. And with that, Cheshire Cat will get another kill and not dying himself. As J4 puts down another ward. And this leads pretty much. That's another good kill for PR. Just stop Power Rangers. Even with the Axe pick not being too great, I think the PA pick is much worse. Can you not understand me? Yeah, I understand. Sorry, I'll talk a bit slower. Our random perk. <laughs> not in team fights, obviously, but uh, in in analysis, yeah, I should talk a bit slower. Apologies for that, especially to non-native English speakers. Right. Anyway, the point is in this bottom win. Illidan is getting a good amount of farm, but so is the Drow Ranger. And when it comes to the mid game, Illidan does have a bit more of the snowball potential, just because he's a PA and he's just a natural uh, powerhouse with a Desolator. But at the same time, look at the net worth, not too much of a difference between them. The Dragon Lance does give the, the Drow Ranger much more survivability, and that helps out a lot in that regard. Oh. And that means that the PA will kind of go, oh, she didn't go for the Vlad's build. Okay, Vlad's Desolator. We've seen this earlier. I actually saw this earlier in the PA game, too, in the SEA region, ironically. I don't know if he's copying that, but, or if it's a new build. I wasn't aware of it. Vlad's also gives a little bit more resistance. Also, life steal, which he looks for, usually. Not a bad idea. Especially when you when you combine with an Oracle. Usually with an Oracle, you need the big X and the Vlad's deal to help you out. And... The yeah, other they actually haven't. Okay, Dragon Ranger actually died to the other time top. Just a quick kill from the Echo Stop. I completely missed it because I wasn't even paying attention to that. But they just barrel strike the epicenter. Okay, that makes, sense. that makes sense. Just a bad positioning by by Goddamn. Goddamn is also a very good Drow Ranger player, granted. So, you know, out of the things he feels confident in playing, Dragon Ranger is one of them. I mean, he's uh, known for Dragon Ranger and Dusa, which are very similar playstyles in terms of. <clears throat> high positioning, you know. Dusa not as much anymore, but it used to be. Used to play Dusa made a lot. And they like this. Goddamn is a great Dusa. Also good for Ranger. The positioning is really good for Goddamn. They utilize that very efficiently. Usually. Only issue with Goddamn often is that he maybe farms a bit too much and misses a couple of assets. Surprisingly enough, for being a great farmer, if we're taking a lot of time to farm, then yeah. the the, the goddamn issue is that he's not on assets. In he goes though, wants to kill the last Gotta kill him off, no mana for the burn strike anyway. But in they go, Armin with three shadow stacks. Oh, three stacks of shadow poison. The bonus come in. Sorry, the thorn has come in and failed. Didn't do much really. Goddamn, not running. 
for his life at 633 and the Lodin trying to look for Timbersoft and trying to look for something else. And the fine goddamn is dead. There's a Tiffling Dagger. Goddamn, very slow down. In comes the Timber as well to try to help him out. Goddamn, starting to get back to his base but won't be able to as they finish him off. And J4 similarly gonna go down as Timbersoft trying to reach him. And the Oracle plays not good enough. Timbersoft with the Chakram. The last Tiffling Dagger will do the trick, but Illidan might go down as well. Lucky enough, he had a Fairy Fire no matter what. And they continue the aggression there. Congrats. And now, here's your cat. Okay, that's just to take it as far. That was good. But, <laughs> that was good play, but I was in the fly. Right, um, I usually don't. I mean, I'm not one to listen to chat, but if someone has some bad criticism, I have no issue with it. Obviously. This is just my point. You can you can cast for six years and you still have things to do. As proven by the fact that you know people still hate Mod and that guy has been on for sixty years. And you always have things to improve. Right, Vlad's now in the Phantom Assassin. That gives him a lot of early game power. And if you look at the net worth now, you can see that that the PA is leading. Just because of those early kills, especially not dying was also pretty boring. That kill on Goddamn was fantastic, it was good tank. And that kill on Timber was even better because they forced the Timber into a bad position and then punished him for it. Good stuff, especially with Stiffling Dagger, but hard to do for it. This is. And always on the fly. Stiffling Dagger kill here as Epicenter and Burrow Strike, so it's an easy kill. If you want to do that, do something. There it is, Epicenter plus Burrow Strike. Now the Air Splitter as well. Alpha needs to hit five, but nothing you could have done there. As two ultimates are, sacrif are used on this Timber Saw, but. Efficiently read it because the more you slow down the bloodstone the better for the team, really. Especially considering the enemy team has a draw ranger without you know with a good amount of farm But you know, that's all they have they not they need to rely on the axe and the timber saw in the mid game to create space for the draw ranger While you have a PA right consider when the <clears throat> When the PA comes online as opposed to when the Dragon Ranger comes online. You have the Phantom Strike, Phantom Strike plus Stifling Dagger in addition to a Desolation to join it, right? So Illidan comes in, destroys the target really easily, becomes a very powerful K, no problem, you know, no harm, no harm done. Similarly, Marana only needs Axe and she's already very powerful. Dragon Ranger has the, the Dragon Lance and she's kind of powerful for the first, like, say, 15 minutes of the game and then stops being powerful because she's too easy to kill. While P it doesn't deal enough damage, or it doesn't deal as much damage as PA. So, they, they take quite a longer time to actually go, come online, and they rely on the Timbersaw and the Axe to actually help him get there. So the Timbersaw, you can delay his blood the more you delay it, the better, and goddamn, being slow by Crafted Finale, but now they're gonna go back with that Moonlight Shadow, a little bit pretty committed. Keeps hitting goddamn, gets a crit, pretty lucky now. The Earth stop or the Echo stop is gonna hit, goddamn, goodbye, Mr. Goddamn, gonna be hit finally with the crit, so Claw, I guess. And the Shadow Demon will also go down as a result, almost as a, as a collateral damage there. Not really intended. He just died. Now, with that, uh, Fantastic Five, pretty happy with these engagements. Killing Goddamn quite a lot. Not funny the Timbersaw too much, but also not giving him too much space to farm because you're constantly carrying his carry, so same idea. Goddamn, not finding the safe spaces. I would suggest that by this point he would go to the jungle or the ancients and try to get some stack, try to get like, extra farm because he keeps getting caught out in lane. As soon as they see him, they fight. Now, he's gonna bring down this tower in the top lane. Illidan and sinking, sinking in the other time in uh, the jungle or in the trees in case someone comes in. There's a TP they were waiting for. Good bait. Axe coming in. And Cheshire Cat is as good as dead as the epicenter comes in with a blink dagger. Goodbye, Cheshire Cat. Too much magical damage. Even the Earth were committed, but there was no need for that whatsoever. For that, going to bring them. Oh, this is hard because the bolt's been committed to this. And can they stop him? They will! With one last Echo Stomp, Big and him can't TP back. The Purifying Flames is available, they don't want to use it just yet, because it's only level. It uh, gets the Infused Ranger up anyway, so it wouldn't have killed him. Now he keeps healing because of the Purifying Flames. There it is, the Purge comes in. Big and him, what are you gonna do to evade this? Nah, no. Try to get one last hit, at least on 63. Well, that honestly, Fantastic Five are, are doing a pretty good job getting the 
They do kill the winning Kuru, that's good stuff on, on J4. Don't know why the Kuru was there to begin with, frankly. Uh, yeah. What, what could possibly possess your courier to go there? Was he checking about Shambo the courier? Not a smart choice. Was he checking this early? Not a smart choice. Was he checking the secret shop? Going to the enemy secret shop? Still not a smart choice. Now. Well, G4 is going to be catching a kitty. Regen rune available if he wants to fight this one. Like Shadow. Good echo stop. Catching J4, putting him to sleep. And this sweet lullaby won't be followed up by anything as the Oracle has been catched or is near a sentry, so he can't really initiate that easily with the Moonlight Shadow. A lot of good sentry placements by Power Rangers are here with that. You know, a good sentry there. There was a couple good sentries earlier, but they were it was fine. Uh, but evading that Moonlight Shadow shenanigans as best they can. As you, see, as you can see, Fantastic Five is already leading by quite a lot. Oh, full arrow missing him just barely. He knew the arrow was coming. And he evades it just in time. 63 has to run away. No leap available. He has to use the phase boots best she can. Can they catch her? No X marks the spot because he actually maxed the tide bringer. And maxing the tide bringer is a good idea, but only if you can lead. If you have a good setup. Shout even disruption is fantastic, but the X marks the spot is as well. Why would you get a second level in torrent? No need for it whatsoever. The build has never been too. Three. The build has been, if anything, one, three, one, and then get more levels in Xbox to spot, or after you max Tidebringer, or Torrent and Xbox to spot. Never skipping levels in Xbox to spot. This is a this is a useless ability right now. 400 range, you won't catch any. I always want to fly keeps going with the trees. He's ready. He's ready for another one of those baiting kills kind of thing. But Pier Power Rangers have learned their lesson. They're not going to try to TP or defend this. They're just going to let it happen. As in the bottom lane, they also try to push out a bit. Ming them with the, I mean, I guess the torrent type bringer helps you in the lane push. That's not a good, by the way. That's just, it's still a dumb build. But <clears throat> that level of... I mean, level 3 of X marks the spot is when it becomes decent. It becomes a, actually a doable ability, especially in the mid game. You know, unless you're you're planning on going for Etherlands, which is not the case, because he's planning on going to arm, on armor. You know, obviously, he's planning on building armor. Right now, can they find? Goddamn, the Moranis seems excited. There's the oh, the Burrow strike plus the slow. Goddamn, gets a silence off. What can you really do with that silence? Considering you have so much damage on the other side, this is a power of Illidan. Hasn't even built the Desolator. Finally has it though if he wants to. And the Blights don't help him ever so slightly. The TP coming out from the same thing. Wants to go on Alpha Ninja. Alpha Ninja, what are you doing? There's an epicenter ready in case they want to kill this. So that'd be a huge convenience, especially considering he's missed the Burrow, Str Burrow Strike. Not gonna find this Timber Sun. Uh, the Blink is here. And good evasion by the Burrow Strike, even catching out of an inch. The arrow's gonna hit him. No axe yet on 63, but no help with the Earth Splitter. Goodbye to now for inch, they say. As 63 tries to jump away, gets hit by the ball regardless. Burrow Strike onto two, stops him, sleeps him. And goodbye, they say, as Fantastic Five lead back to their base. With that, it does seem like Fantastic Five are going to stop a bit to get their farm. That's what they were looking for anyway. And they have a, you have a good amount of items now on them already. I'm wondering when the Desolator, there it is. Desolator finally in Illidan. I'm going to go for, I mean, this could honestly be an Echo Saber. We've seen that before, and it's not too terrible on a PA. still think that he would be a better option. I even Sanjay Yasha in some situations on a PA, uh, which is another common pickup. You know, both of them are, are all right. Echo Saber doesn't really trigger with your Stifling Diamond, which is the biggest issue, but the stats it gives you are really nice, especially the extra strength. Mirana does get her Ag, that's huge, as that's going to allow her to kill the Timber Saw really quickly. Timber Saw is not yet, or, or has not yet built that Bloodstone. Very close, though. As, as far as things are going, as bad things are going for P Power Rangers, it is not that bad. 
as uh, awful ninja get with this. You can get a quick bloodstone. I mean, you can get a decent amount, of, a decent amount of bloodstone. Getting a bunch of premium bonus. Yo, goddamn, Obi! Wow, put it to death. But the boat comes in. False promise. Seven hundred fifty before. Storage taking a lot of damage, but the epicenter is already out. As I always want to fly, almost destroys the axe. The J4 will go down. Cheshire Cat now in trouble. I always want to fly. Still wanting to get the kill from behind. Comes the Timber Saw. Kills the Sank, uh, the other Titan, but at the expense of his own life. Not what he wanted to do. And one last blow strike will stop the TP. Cheshire Cat is, is dead. Unable to do much in that situation as they just bring him down. Now they're gonna take down this tower. Oh, then destroying uh, this later increases her, increases his amount of uh, snowball potential by taking towers really easily with that minus armor. Also, really uh, hurts the axe considerably. Consider the axe that without the berserker's call has a pretty shitty armor on it. So it's definitely uh, the desolator hurts even further, especially considering the PA has the Vlad's herself. So that extra four, arm, actually four armor, sorry. Is a lot. Now the armor will come out of the Konka. Which is not really gonna help him much, but I guess. Oh my. Why are you maxing Torrent, you animal? I know you have a setup with Shadow Demon, but you just get more levels of X marks to spot being them. Please, you're such a good Konka player. Don't go for this. Place. There's another land and build, which is used, by the way. So the Kunta gets the arm bolt and gets Max's Tidebringer. But it's never Max and Torrent. That's, that's not an option. That's not even a single build. It's just your own personal build, which is not working out for you. Because they have no setup whatsoever. Imagine if you could actually catch them running with X marks to spot. How many, got, how many X marks to spot have you guys seen in this game that has actually been good? Oh, shit. Just realized something. I believe we got him earlier. Yeah, there it is. I, I mean, nobody really bought the ticket. I don't even think we have a ticket. But it's still, it's still good to have. The axe triggers, yeah, but no blink dagger means it's hard to kill the timber saw, especially no angle with an arrow. That's fine. They still use the astral spirit to uh, scout around a bit more, which is good. Last quite a while. It's like a moving ward at this point. It's like having a bounty hunter on your team. Not a bad idea. Oracle went for defense. It increases his damage quite a lot. Actually. Not a bad idea though. Uh, as he now deals more damage than he is. Alright, gonna pick out Shadow Demon with the disruption. They don't do it in time, but they don't care. A solo quest is here for the Elder Titan that's gonna help destroy him in a matter of seconds. That's the other con build. We've seen Solo Crest in We've seen Solo Crest in uh, the Phantom Assassin. And it's worked out really well for her because you can use Solar Crest and then proceed to stifling dagger someone out. That's fantastic. But in this situation, they actually solar quest and the Elder Titan who needs less farm and he doesn't really need any items. I mean, at best, sometimes you want the influence and most on the Elder Titan you force that that's good. Not even kill the creep. Goodbye to your stack, sir. Well, I don't know if that was a stacking creep. Yeah, that was a stacking creep. I mean, yeah, I could take those stacks. Easier than that. Draw, okay. By the way, Elder Titan gets for solar quest. It doesn't seem effect as a Fire Ranger grabbing it, but actually it saves up or frees up one item slot on the Fire Ranger. Who now has a BKB? Yep. She finally got the BKB. The Blink Dagger is also coming on 633. That's huge. That Bizzle's Blink Dagger is going to be fantastic. And now we're going to keep trying. One last team fight. Oh, they just go. Here they go. She's your cat. Yes, they're in the crowd. Or they're the PA. If he wasn't destroyed himself in the middle of that initiation, the Earth Splitter completely wrecking him as Illidan pops, but grab the age in time. That false promise game the right amount of time to you know, just revive. God damn it, so wanted to fight this. I was gonna fly with a stun. God damn it, in trouble, loses his agility and then his armor. Try and find out for Nage. Gotta wreck him in time with one last stifling dagger. Never mind. A purifying flames like she saves him there, but they will finish him off with the last purifying flames. Purifying flames, the spell that heals you, kills you, does everything. And Bignum in behind, regretting that he didn't get any more levels X marks a spot. Jesus. And with that Power Rangers are considerably against the ropes. As you can see, 10,000 gold going to Fantastic Five, almost 10,000 gold going to uh, 20,000 experience, sorry, going to Fantastic Five. It's really by that much. They even take a couple of the stacks, and the team has set up for themselves. Why would you save the center? That's unnecessary. I guess they just don't. Well, <laughs> Jesus Christ, Shadow. 
Look at that. I did I couldn't even turn my camera fast enough for Shadow Demon to die. You know, like it, it just was too quick. The Sora Quest also helps a little bit a lot because those evasions stack somewhat. Like similar to uh, the butterfly and the blur evasion stack. Uh, I don't know what the word is for it, but you know, not they don't fully stack, but they're partially stacked. And also gives them a lot of armor. And they go against Big Num, they do see Big Num has to be a good spot, or just to watch the fight, because that's also a lot to seeing a lot of damage that can help save them now with a bit of healing. I think he's gonna pop. Never mind, actually. He barely took damage. Okay, that was fine. Healed a lot with the blast, of course. I go into Cheshire Cat, heals most of his health. And there they go. Stun first, stun, and then the sleep second. He even misses the sleep because he dies way too quickly. The PA is doing too much damage. Could destroy Alphonasia, barely a couple hits. The 63 already comes in with a Star Storm, and now J4 in trouble. The Phantom Strike, goodbye to this Shadow Demon as the Kunkka comes in. Has the power of the Xbox spot to save his life, but that's much hit. So then finally takes his tower down. And. I didn't take the rats. No. With the Desolator power, the main the healing that the Oracle used to give him. However, now that they're missing the healing, they still have the other time to scout out. And Alpha Ninja, if he dies again, loses most of his bloodstone charges, and he is gonna go back. Come on. Odin comes in, one big crit, good by him. And as the bolt comes in, if only he had X marks the spot. This would have been so nice, I wouldn't have been big. But Bam can't even get close to Odin. Her his range is insane. Those stifling daggers have way too big a range. I'm surprised. 26 to 5 at the game. Not not even whatsoever. I just keep saying GG call for GG already call. Power Rangers still want to fight this. Yeah, it's 50,000 net worth difference, 14,000 experience difference, and obviously the Elder Tire is more prominent to the axe. But besides that, they're. They can still win with the Awakened Drow Ranger trying to defend the space, but I mean, that's not doing exactly what they should be doing. Which is, <clears throat> push as hard as you can. Destroy the enemy team and take the towers as quickly as you can, right? Uh, you dive hard, but sensibly, you know, don't, don't, don't dive too hard, right? Take the Roshan objectives whenever you can, and again, sensibly. And never stop putting pressure. Don't stop the farm. You don't have those that kind of army any or the kind of heroes anyway. You'd rather just go in and try to take towers as fast as you can. Towers are your farm anyway. No. Nilden continues to push his lane down bottom, also giving him a bit of farm. No battlefield makes this slow this uh, pretty slow push, but my desolator helps with these towers. Yeah. Look how fast that goes that the armor. Minus seven armor is huge against this. And the tower will go down as Illidan proceeds to destroy it. Will Power Rangers defend it? So will they be able to defend it at all? Honestly, there's no Aegis on Illidan, so that's a good point. But last time there was no Aegis either. And they have the Epi, they have the False Promise, they have... The Stifling Dagger. They have the uh, Moonlight Shadow just 20 seconds as well. Whereas the enemy team, sure, they have a boat, but no way to set it up. Finally, level 2 is on the spot. And obviously, the modest point that's again not a big deal. And so, DKB, that's supposed to be a PA. Oh, goddamn, he needs another good arrow. I should have wanted to go on to one to fly, but he was the first one to get hit. Goddamn, about to die. And in goes Illidan, kills Shisher Cat first. Bye bye to your initiation. Pops the Illidan in a matter of seconds. Now going to J4. Goodbye to you as well, J4. And Bingham is the only thing left alive that's out here. Kill him with one last crit, don't even need it. God damn it's been stopped in place. Illidan wants to get the team wipe, won't finish it. But who cares, an ultra kill is enough for him as the GG comes out. Now Rangers take the, or lose the first game to Fantastic Five, who take it 31 to five. What a good job. That, that said, I mean, that was, Quick GG. That was very quick GG. Fantastic fight complete dominate. And that was just a snowball from Illidan completely, frankly. I don't think there's much more you can do in that situation. It, most of these games I've seen something similar, but Jesus, that was too much. Okay, that said, we have another match very soon. In fact, in just 10 minutes will be the next match between... Uh, oh, no, never mind. We have it in 30 minutes. We'll have the next match between Power Rangers and Fantastic Five. We'll keep the stream open but not actually, you know, talk. Let's put some music. Hope you enjoyed the cast. Sorry for my raspy voice. That's from casting too much. Um, but uh, I've been, my name has been D Swordfish. It's been a pleasure casting for you guys. Hope you've enjoyed it. And if you haven't, and if you hate me, fuck off. Cheers, guys. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in 40 minutes for the next match of the day. Until then.
retomar la idea de los Important Games Folder. <risa>